Defining QoS Profiles in XML. QoS profiles in DDS are defined by XML. And the XML schema or syntax is actually a formal OMG definition. The root tag would be DDS. And within DDS, uh, you'll have one or more what is known as QoS libraries. And then a QoS library will contain one or more QoS profiles. Here's an example of QoS profiles defined in XML. Within the DDS tag, you'll have a QoS library. And a QoS library contains a definition of one or more QoS profiles. A QoS profile will contain the definition of QoS policies for one or more DDS entities. Now, commonly, you'll find QoS profiles that only define the participant QoS or QoS profiles that affect end-to-end -end behavior, which means that it will contain QoSs for the data writers and data readers. Let's take a closer look at QoS profiles. As you know, a QoS profile defines a set of related QoS settings. In this example, the name of the QoS profile is strict reliable. If you use a strict reliable profile, you should be getting a strict reliable connection between the data writer and data reader. Therefore, this profile contains definitions of QoS values for both data writer objects as well as data reader objects. And you're supposed to use this profile to create both the data writer and data reader. If you do, you're ensured that the data writer and data reader QoS values are one, compatible, and two, will provide the supported designed end-to-end -end behavior. If you use different QoS profiles to create the data reader and data writer, you may end up with incompatible QoS or behavior that's unexpected. Of course, a QoS profile needs to be tested to make sure that the QoS definitions within it are compatible as well as the QoS actually, uh, the QoS profile actually supports the behavior as designed. QoS libraries help to organize QoS profiles. So a library can contain multiple QoS profiles. What they fundamentally do is scope the name of a QoS profile. You could have the same QoS profile name used in different libraries, but by using the library name, you could distinguish one profile from another. How is this useful? Well, for example, I may have a subsystem um, that has fast data, and my definition of fast data, my QoS profile is designed to support data that's being sent 10 times a second, and I will call that profile fast data. Now, you could also be creating a subsystem with DDS, and in your system, fast data is a thousand times a second. And because you're using DDS, you may create a QoS profile called fast data as well. But your fast data is designed for a thousand times a second. My fast data is designed for 10 times a second. How do I not use your fast data? How do you not accidentally use my fast data definition? Well, we can create these profiles and put them in a library. I will have my library, you'll have your library. So my applications are going to look for a QoS profile in my library called Fast Data, and your applications are going to look for a QoS profile called Fast Data in your library. So it makes it very distinguishable where the QoS profile is coming from. Previously, we didn't want to use somebody else's definition of a QoS profile with the same name. However, there are scenarios where you yourself may want to define the same QoS profile multiple times with the same name. And these profiles will be used to support the running of your application under different operating scenarios. For example, the QoS required for testing is maybe different than the QoS settings for simulation, maybe different than the settings for deployment. To do this, what you can do is create three different libraries. One library contains all the profiles that should be used during testing. Another one should be all the profiles that should be used during simulation. And finally, a set of profiles that should be used during deployment. It's far easier to change the library where your profiles are coming from than to go through and label in a flat namespace all the different types of profiles that you have and all the variations of the profiles that there are. 
How are QS policies defined in XML? Well, to make it very simple, XML tags are exactly the same as the names of the members in the equivalent C++ structure, or C, C++ structure. As an example, in C or C++, you may have the data writer QoS structure, the reliability policy, and the kind parameter. So to access it in code through an API, it's data writer QoS dot reliability dot kind, and you set that value. Similarly, you have max blocking time second, max blocking time nanosecond. So this code is the code that you would write to modify the reliability policy in the writer QoS. Well, in XML, you have the data writer QoS as a tag. You have the reliability as a tag, kind as a tag, max blocking time as a tag, and second nanoseconds as a tag in this order. And note, the spelling is exactly the same between the C, C++ structure definition as well as the XML tag. We'll take a look at some important details on setting QoS values in XML. The first of this is time. It's important when you're setting a time in XML to set both the seconds tag and nanoseconds tag. You must set the seconds field and nanoseconds field. If you don't, the result isn't what you're going to expect. The resulting setting will be infinite and not what you wanted. For example, if you want one second, you must set the seconds tag to one and the nanoseconds tag to zero. If you don't set the nanoseconds tag, the result is actually infinite. If you want zero seconds, you have to set both the nanoseconds tag and the seconds tag to zero. You may have fields that are of sequence type. That is a field that is a variable length list. That's what a sequence is. Well, to do that, you would just use multiple elements. So the number of elements that appear in that field is the length of that sequence. You don't have to explicitly set the length of a sequence in XML. In code, you would have to. And in code, you have to explicitly set the length of a sequence. But in XML, you just have to uh, explicitly set the number of elements, as in each element and the number of elements uh, are, will be counted, and that will be the length of that sequence. For enumerations in code, enumeration, enumerations are usually prefixed by a DDS underscore. Uh, so in the API, uh, you would have to have a DDS underscore length unlimited, a DDS underscore reliability, reliable reliability QoS. Um, in XML, you can drop that DDS underscore. And for Boolean, uh, you could use true false or Boolean true Boolean false or one zero. So some additional details about setting QS values. When you define a QS profile, it will actually start out with a base set of default values. It actually defines QS values for every QS policy. And the default values that it's defining are the documented defaults, the defaults that are documented for every policy. When you modify or when you actually write what a QS profile is, what you're trying to do is you're overriding the base values. You're saying these are the ones that are changed from the default. So best practice is not to define a QS value inside of a QS profile unless you're modifying the default. If you just want to use the default documented default value of a QS policy inside of a QS profile, then don't even define that QS policy at all inside the profile. Another thing that you want to be aware of is if you're setting a QS value that's a sequence, okay, you're going to replace the entire sequence. We're not going to merge your changes with the existing value of that sequence. And an example of that is the discovery initial peers QS, which a lot of people make a mistake. They go, hey, I just want to add um, this address to the initial peers list. So in my QS uh, settings, I'll just have this additional element in the initial peers sequence. And then DDS will somehow merge it with the existing value. Well, that doesn't happen. What DDS does, it'll replace the existing value with 
your value. So if you only set one IP address as initial peer for the discovery, we'll only use that one. If you wanted to quote unquote add it to the default list of initial peers, then you actually have to explicitly have those values in your QoS definition. The only exception to this is the property QoS policy, which is also a sequence. The property QoS policy for the different entities will be merged. And there's a very good reason for that. It's mostly because you don't really know what are the properties of an entity, and we don't want you to be uh, replacing them unless you're explicitly wanting to replace them. First, let's talk about some best practices in defining QoS profiles in XML. Um, as discussed, um, it is possible to specify a user QoS profile as the default profile used by the API. Uh, what I mean is this, you could take one of your user defined profiles, okay, let's say I define something called reliable data, and I could make this the default profile by using is default QoS equal true. If I use is default QoS that set that attribute to be true in a profile that I've defined, that becomes what is known as the default profile that's used by the API. The API that uses it are any API that uses that any DDS API that creates an entity in which you pass in the QoS default enumeration or that constant. Um, that you know participant QoS default or data reader QoS default, data writer QoS default, and you pass that into create participant or create data reader or create data writer. That will use quote unquote a default profile, and the default profile by default is the documented default profile. Now, uh, with this kind of trick of setting one of your profiles to be is default profile, uh, that create entity. Uh, call will now use whatever you define as a default profile instead of the documented default. Um, we don't recommend you doing this. This isn't a great practice for a real system. And uh, the biggest problem is um, create something with the with the default profile, create entity with a default profile will always work. Um, because even if we don't find your profile, there's always a documented default profile. And then you could also be setting is default QS true on multiple uh, QS profiles. So in the end, you don't really know, uh, you can't really lock down which profile is being used to create your entity. So uh, while it's a, you know something that allows you to sort of get in on the, in the back door, it's not really a, a good practice for a real system. So we don't recommend it. Um, when you're creating XML, actually when you're coding, uh, when you're, whenever you copy and paste something from one piece of code to another piece of code, one from one uh, QoS setting to another QoS setting, that should ring an alarm, uh, that should raise a, an alarm. Uh, copy and pasting is never good because uh, ultimately if you have to modify something that you copy and pasted to multiple files, you have to go look at all those other profiles that you copy and pasted those settings to and modify them everywhere. So instead what we suggest uh, is to take common QoS settings, settings that are going to be commonly used across different profiles, and then uh, do use profile inheritance to inherit those common settings, or use profile composition to take those settings and compose it into your new profile. Finally, um, usually you're going to be using an XML editor to to create your XML files, uh, not just a plain old text editor, uh, an XML editor, which a lot of text editors are also XML editors, but things like Visual Studio or Visual uh, Code are also XML editors, so is Eclipse. Uh, they can take an XML schema, basically the syntax, the defined syntax, the valid syntax of an XML file in, in, in a file called XSD. That really does a definition of the schema. And we provide a schema for DDS. We provide the full XSD that allows your editor to help you uh, create as well as validate the syntax of a XML file that contains the QS profiles that are being defined. Um, so if this uh, this uh, line, if you put this line that at the top of your file, this DDS tag with these extra attributes telling the, ex the editor 
where that schema is of the editor will automatically read that schema then be able to use that schema. Now the schema can be found in two places. Uh, one, it's available always online. You can always go to our website. So if you basically put an HTTP link uh, to, our, uh, to our community website, uh, the schema uh, and will be there. Not for just this one version, but uh, there's um, a schema for all the versions. The different schemas for all the versions are there. Um, of Connects DDS are there. And finally, uh, it's also in your local installation of our Connects DDS. When you install Connects DDS in the install directory of Connects DDS, there's a resource schema directory. And in that schema directory, there is the um, schema that you can use to help you create the XML QS profiles. In summary, QS profiles define a set of QS values that are designed to be used together to configure some specific end-use behaviors. QS profiles are, designed, are defined in XML and organized in QS libraries. End-to-end -end behavior is crafted by both defining publisher data writer QSs and subscriber data reader QS in the same QS profile. RTI provides an XML schema file to help you create QS profiles with XML editors.